Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. I'm Nick, also known as Oso oh Sick, and I'm here with I'm in Zamora, Vision Wheel. So I'm actually here in Corona, California, at the Vision Wheel Warehouse for the Western Western Regional Warehouse. Western Regional Warehouse. So as you can hear in the background, they got forklifts going on. They're shipping stuff out. I said shipping. Shipping, and we're actually working, even though someone wanted to try to shut it down, but can't afford to do that while well, we got money going out the door so yeah, I tried Nick's got to listen to the beeping yeah so sorry guys but I'm doing my best with the audio I'm sure it'll be fine maybe uh, if you guys keep watching subscribing liking commenting I could afford to shut it down for a couple hours for the next filming <laughs> but uh, let's just go ahead and get started and let you guys know what I'm doing here I'm assuming this is kind of like the things with my Civic when I had to test different offsets. Uh, you know, what I usually do is just get the new wheel, put it on, make sure it clears the caliper, and then I kind of measure the length to see if I need to pull or roll my fenders. What That's do you guys do? kind of the same function. I mean, most of the, the it's, it's, it's automotive related as well. I mean, you're just doing the same thing. You're dry fitting a wheel. You get a new wheel, anything you buy from any company, it doesn't matter what manufacturer, you always want to test fit that before you put a tire on it because as we all have on our boxes and no one reads, you mount it, you own it. So it's kind of a safety thing. This thing, you get the wheel, again, take all your stock stuff off, slide it over the stock studs, make sure you got clearance, doesn't touch calipers, make sure it doesn't touch the spindles, um, so that you've got that correct. There's a couple different things you can do with it, making the car wider or keeping it stock width. So that's a couple things that we're gonna test fit on there in just a few minutes just so you can see what the difference is on it. See, and that's why I'm really glad to have you guys on board with this program because, well, for one, as you can see, I already have a set of Vision Wheels on the, on the Talon. We actually displayed it and debuted it at the Mint 400 in Las Vegas. So we just came back from that and uh, we wanted to see if maybe I could get something that looks a little more aggressive. I like the more aggressive look, especially in all my automotive stuff that I've ever done. So hopefully we can see if these other wheels will do that. But there is a surprise for you guys. I don't know how much you can say, but can you share anything with them right now? Yeah, we've got some stuff coming in the future. So it's it's coming pretty soon. Um, it's something we're working on right now. And again, with this offsets that we're checking um, on this vehicle and a couple of the vehicles, we're gonna be able to be able to tell exactly where it fits, how it fits, and how we want it to be so it's actually correct. So we'll see. There it is. So clearly that's as much as he could tell you. But for those of you who are just tuning into the side-by-side -side world or crossing over just like me, the new Talons, uh, all of them actually come with 15-inch tires for the front and rears. The fronts are actually uh, 15 by six and a half with the 50 millimeter offset, and the rear is a 15 by eight with a 33 offset. So they're staggered. Yep. So they come staggered, and as the aftermarket, what we do, everybody usually goes a basically what we call a square vehicle. So the aftermarket is gonna go with 15.6 or 15.7, and that's all the way around, front and rear both, and it's generally the same offset. The only time we stagger an eight to a 10 or a seven to an eight is sand application, because obviously with the bigger balloon tires on the sand application, you got paddles that obviously need that. On a hard pack or a trail car, which this is kind of generally set up for in the off-road, you're going square, it makes it nice and easy. Cool, so let's get started. Okay, let's get this one torn apart. Pretty good jack. <laughs> As you guys can see, uh, Jaime's actually using my jack right now. This is definitely not an off-road jack, if that's even the word. It's a low-profile jack because obviously my Civic and my other Hondas are lowered. But it works, check that out. There we go, we're in the air. So do I need to invest in a better jack for uh, this off-road application stuff? Yeah, there's actually some pretty cool stuff that's out on the market right now. So it's a pretty common stud. It's a 12 by 1.5. And this is what same thing we use on the Honda Accords, Honda Civics. Um, Nick's little SI. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, yeah that's one way to put it. <laughs> up we got the 545 rocker 15 by 7 it's got a four inch back spacing so this is gonna make it a little more aggressive than what it is factory how nicely packaged it like if you were to get a, a 
sharp knife and cut through it, you wouldn't even hit the wheel. Oh wow, check that out. Yeah, look at everything. Sick. Package nice and neat. This is again the rocker with the uh, charcoal gray center, black lip, simulated bolts on it. Comes with a good snap in style cap. And again, this is our 15 by 7. This is our flow formed UTV wheel. All right, Hyman, so what are some of the things for the side by side stuff that I have to look out for when it comes to finding the correct offset? Obviously, I don't want to hit anything. Yeah, obviously, on, when you're test fitting, dry fitting a wheel, your clearance is ball joint, tie rod end, upper part of the spindle itself, or the upper arm itself. The strut's usually a little bit closer than that, but if you got a good straight edge, I don't, I got a clear plastic one right now, you're roughly about four and a half inches away from that. You're clear from everything here. You get a sidewall bulge from a, a 15 by seven tire. If you're using a 30 to a 33 inch tall tire, you're usually gonna have at least a one inch to an inch and a quarter bulge per side. So if you're measuring from, again, from the outer edge of the wheel, about another inch, inch and a half out, and you've got all this clearance, you're good as far as not having any issues rubbing on the upper arm Again, you're double checking tie rod in, you're double checking ball joint, and then you see the backside where you've got no caliper issues whatsoever. So when the offset is uh, more aggressive, it's negative. Yeah, so when, when, the off, when you change the offset from the stock positive offset, and you go from a plus 50, and you push it outboard to let's say a plus 30, to a plus 12 or plus 13, that changes the geometry of the vehicle itself. So now you're putting all the pressure, instead of being in here at stock position, now you're hanging everything way out here. Just like, again, the, the standard automotive truck wheel. Now you're putting all the pressure where everything is moving out here, instead of back here where it was originally manufactured to be. So again, you go too wide, you can create a vibration, you can create a lot of stress, a lot of wear, uh, ball joints, the steering, um, there's quite a bit of things that you can do wrong there. So again, keeping to as stock as possible helps you to not generate those kind of issues. If you want the stability, you're an enthusiast, you can do that because you're not that aggressive on it. The race side, fortunately the race side, you change what everybody knows as the scrub radius. You change that scrub radius to get too aggressive, you run into a lot of issues. So. Obviously, wheel spacers would kind of play the same same effect, right? Yeah. So wheel spacers, I know some people talk about doing that to push it out. That's one thing you generally, one, you don't like to do because a spacer basically shortens your thread on the studs and your stud engagement and thread engagement is very important so that this stuff doesn't fall off. You're putting a lot of pressure. You're putting 1,600 pounds on a corner when you're out playing. You go into a corner just turning. You're putting all that vehicle weight radiates into this corner and if you don't have the correct bite on that stud enough thread bite on it you're going to lose a wheel you can break a wheel do you off-road guys not believe in extended studs or what fortunately and unfortunately on a lot of the utv side they're not doing that it's just using a stock stud some guys will upgrade to a 12 millimeter what's on here uh, in previous years from probably 15 and older they were using actually a 10 millimeter stud so and actually a 38 stud so it was getting pretty small so now they're finally upgrading to the 12 millimeter because these cars are doing a lot more than what they used to five years ago. You can actually install longer studs, race studs on it using an open end type lug nut so that you have that exposed. The only downfall to that is in the dirt, you will get that mud pack, you'll get the, the uh, granules into those studs. So when you're taking those lug nuts off, you gotta make sure that stuff is clean before you take it off. So, uh, oh boy. Yeah. so I guess it has pros and cons. Guys. It does. <clears throat> so this one looks like it clears. Um, and what offset is this again? This wheel is actually a 4.4 backside to a 2.6 front side. So as everybody knows that the offsets on the wheels on the UTV stuff, it's either the most popular is a 4.3, again that's a 4 inch back, 3 inch face. Or it's a 5.2, so it's a 5 inch back, 2 inch face, so that gives it more positive offset. Or you can go with 6.1, again on 7 inch wide wheels, it keeps everything you know, as close as possible to the suspension. Yeah, so if you guys are anything like me, I totally just got lost. Um, 
I'm <laughs> kind of used to the whole, you know, what happened to plus 22, like my Civic. Exactly. Stuff. Well, that's yeah. something that actually still is used on this, but on the UTV side, the most common is actually using the backside first and then the front side. In the actual part number of the boxes, we do actually use that, a plus 38, plus 13, plus 15 offset. But for some reason on the UTV side, when I learned it six years ago from a good friend of mine, um, it was a learning curve because you don't know that automatically and the transition going from a vehicle to a UTV. Because a UTV is just somewhat of the same animal, but it's different. Noted. Looks like I got some memorizing to do. All right. so. This one looks good. Let's try another one. Okay. Now we're going to try the 356 Manx 2. This is actually our true V lock. Cast wheel with a Ford V lock ring. Again, same good packaging. It's got all your warranty information, your warranty or your install information for the V lock itself. And you got, again, the limited finish instruction warranty for the wheel. Do you guys have instructions to tell you how much to torque down the V lock? That is all in part of the instructions. There you go, guys. So read it. Don't just throw it away. I know this right here is going to tell you exactly how to put this together. I know if you're like me, not ASC certified, you guys just like to throw that stuff away. But uh, sometimes it's good to keep it handy. Yep, it's good to know because otherwise you're going to be calling our tech line trying to figure out how we actually tighten those down. So and they do need to be torqued if you've never dealt with a bead lock, obviously yep. for. Obviously, you can see where everything gets shredded into the wheel. The knurling, so the tire actually gets squished in the inside of here, and then the ring fits right over the top. So as the tire lays here, the ring fits over the top of that, basically squeezes into this knurling as a grip. So, so as a difference from your 545 rocker, non-bead lock, to this, this actually is going to hold the tire. If you get a flat, you get a blowout, this holds your assembly together as long as you can pull over, get to a spot where you need to change that out. Hopefully you have a spare and you can just swap this out. There you go. Look, you just answered my question because usually for the drag racing stuff, that's when I use B-Lock drag wheels and under a lot of power, my Civic's not quite there yet, but on the big horsepower cars, if you don't have a B-Lock, the slick will actually grip so hard at the track that it'll it'll start slipping on that. Yeah, end. you will get some torque twist. I doubt you'll get that on the UTV stuff. The only time you'll actually get a torque twist, which will be done during braking and during acceleration, is if the beadlock ring and tire combo do not meet up correctly. So if you get a UTV tire that's designed to go on a UTV stock wheel and you put it on an aftermarket wheel. Some aftermarket wheels, this channel itself here could be too deep. And when this channel is too deep, it leaves that tire loose. It doesn't matter how much you torque this ring to sit flat on this surface here. If it doesn't have the correct compression here, that tire is still gonna slip. Well, so, so <laughs> if you can save up and you know, you pretty much put every penny towards the aftermarket wheels, especially b locks you should probably save a little more for you aftermarket You want to save tires. a little more for the aftermarket tire as well, because the aftermarket tire is made for the aftermarket wheel. OE tire is actually made for the OE wheel. The OE tire might not quite fit the aftermarket wheel correctly. So that's one thing you do have to double check. Brands make a difference. Go into a good shop to give you that technical information and show you this, to learn you this, because a lot of people are just hopefully crossing over to get in into the dirt. It's a couple things to learn, you know, so it's not that easy. And don't don't be scared to ask, guys. I mean, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're here to give technical advice. You know, it's not like the old days when you ask and people just kind of blow you off. Here you ask is because we're trying to get you that intelligence so that you buy the correct part and hopefully buy it from us. So obviously, bull pattern's correct. Wheel's a little bit wider. This is a seven inch wide wheel. Offset, if you're looking inside, we're still good on clearance. We got plenty of ball joint, tie rod end, upright clearance here, we're good. We come back again, we're measuring away from the lower strut mount, and we actually got more distance here. We got about five inches more clearance from here itself. So now this is gonna make, compared to the other wheel, this is going to make the car another three quarters of an inch wider than what it was before. So the extra three quarters of an inch, depending on what size tire you run, is going to give you that extra footprint, that extra traction, the extra stability. 
But also put more stress on the powertrain part. It also will put some more stress on the powertrain, but it won't be as excessive if you're going another inch wider. You go two inches wider on per side, depending on the suspension, you put a lot of stress on the on the suspension parts itself and steering. So this one's a four and a half inch so back space. Four and a half inch back space. So this is also a seven wide with a four and a half inch back spacing, two and a half inch face. And then, uh, and just a technical note for most everybody who's buying a set of wheels, when people tell you you're buying a 15 by seven, when you add this ring to the face of the wheel and you measure from outside to outside diameter, it's actually gonna measure about three quarters of an inch to an inch wider than what you're looking for. This wheel is actually marked as a seven but when you mark or measure, excuse me, the af the overall width on it, it's actually measured eight inches wide. Where your true measurement, where your tire sits, is in between on a bead lock from the face of here to this inner channel here. So from bead to bead is actually the technical part of when you're buying a wheel, whether it's UTV, whether it's car, whether it's light truck, anything. When they ask you for the size of it, what you're buying is the measurement where the tire seats itself, which is right here where my fingers are at. The overall width is different because the overall width is here. And when anybody measures this with a tape measure, when it's on a tire already, they're going to say, hey, I need a seven inch wide wheel, but you physically measure it, you're measuring an eight. Now you're questioning yourself, but it doesn't come in an eight. It only comes in a seven. So again, the technical side, when you're buying a wheel, when they give you a size, the width is measured bead to bead inside not outside overall so just something to kind of keep in mind and for all you ASC certified mechanics out there we're only putting one lug nut just for testing and checking the clearances yes. we know you're supposed to put all four we know it's supposed to get torqued but I'm not AC certified, and I don't think I'm as either, so we're good. No, nope, we're good. And this is YouTube, on, so. All right, let's get to the next wheel. All right. And just a real quick note, just to kind of hopefully not make the confusion any worse. Well, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm really confused, but go ahead. So <laughs> when we're talking on a UTV wheel, again, this was kind of asked to me. When you talk the offset on the wheel, the UTV wheel, this wheel is a four and a half inch backspacing. So from this mounting surface here, where it meets up against the rotor, to the outer flat surface here, so the wheel is where that's measured at. So the other two and a half inches is again from the flat surface here, through the face to the front side. That's where the other two and a half inches is measured. So when this offset, the backspacing from here to here gets a higher number, that means the wheel is gonna get tucked in more. So again, that's a more positive offset. So again, this wheel's a four and a half, two and a half, which is a plus 13 millimeter offset. So. Where is zero? Zero on a wheel. You add the bead lock and the wheel. We've got eight inch wide wheel. Center of this wheel is right at four inches. And that's how you get the zero. Off. That's where we get zero. So now this wheel being a four and a half inch backspacing, that backspacing is a half inch from center, which equates to the 13 millimeter. Because for you who don't remember some of the math, 25.4 millimeters equals one inch. So half inch from center, 13 millimeters. So that's where we get the plus 13 on a four and a half inch backspacing. Boom, there it is, see? A little bit of math. You, I knew math would teach me something after high school sometimes it's not just counting money we got to do some equations mm. so let's get another wheel going so now here <laughs> we're actually pulling out as you guys see the the rage uh -oh. tires and wheels who's ready to rage this is actually a private label that we manufacture for one of our customers so the sick. reason for we have that we have it here is because we're about to shift some of these to them but all we're doing is just testing to the different offsets. So. Again, same thing. This has got a simulated. Oh, look at that. See, I know a lot of you guys. Simulated bolt on ring. This has got the instructions on how to put this on. Again, your care, warranty, all in the box. 
See, not all papers are done. You guys gotta sometimes just check Take this out. off on this ring. Check this out. Another ring. This is actually a polymer ring. We call a rash ring because you can actually thrash this. It helps protect the face of the wheel. This way, and anytime you damage this, all you gotta do is unbolt it. Spend about 90 bucks a piece for these instead of buying a whole new wheel or replacing a forged beadlock ring for about 150 bucks a piece. Oh, so that's not beadlock. So this is not a beadlock. This is a simulated beadlock. So this is just helps you out because as we call it again, it's in our catalog as a rash ring. So again, another 15 by seven. This is a four inch backspacing. So we're basically increasing about half inch increments. Again, we didn't show earlier, but you got clearances here. You can see we're sitting flat against the hub. There's no caliper issues here. Backside, same. So a lot of the automotive stuff, uh, when, when I purchase wheels or when anybody purchases wheels, we have to like really take into consideration the hub because a lot of the aftermarket wheels require like a centric hub adapter or ring. Yeah, some Is of that? them, some of the imports, well, actually a lot of the imports uh, will require a hub centric ring if the wheel doesn't come hub centric already. What that basically does is give you that mounting surface or the mating surface of the wheel matches the mating surface of the vehicle. So that there's no gap between the hub or the wheel, which would give you any kind of movement to create any kind of vibration that would transmit into the steering, into the axles, and then you feel in the steering wheel. So the UTV side of it, the hub bore on some of the smaller cars, 110 millimeter bore up to some of the bigger cars, on a 4156 bull pattern is 131 millimeter. Don't really need to worry about hub centric on the UTV side of it because most of these wheels are not gonna be hub centric. They just fit up to the mating surface or the mounting surface of the wheel. Ideally, the correct bull pattern, the correct stud size, because again, there are some wheels that are older on the market that will have the smaller 10 millimeter stud, but this now has the upgraded 12 millimeter studs. So another thing to watch out for there. All right, so then and then obviously just the offset, make sure we get the right offset. Yeah, the offset needs to be correct on it. Again, we'll, you know, I go back to that. It's the further you go away from center, from the geometry of the car, from being stock, the scrub radius, I'll use that word. It's not my word, but I'll use that word. The scrub radius actually changes. The more aggressive you go, the more aggressive you'll feel coming through that steering wheel. On the race application, you can't do that as too aggressive because I've done that in the past with a couple teams to where it vibrated enough that it would almost yank a steering wheel out of your hand. So it's a serious vibration if you go too aggressive, if you go the wrong way. So, so, it's so say not, no to scrubs. So say no, <laughs> say no to scrubs. Exactly. All right, see, you, you get it. Yep. A lot of my younger followers, they might not get it, but go ahead and uh, just... Just Google search no scrubs, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> there you go. So again, offsets, make sure your stock geometry is best as possible. Um, the correct fitments on it, don't go too aggressive. So that's another thing to look out for, um, depending on the, if you're using a stock lug nuts. This, you might not even be able to fit a socket in there. Now you see that stock socket. I know it's hard to see because you know what can we just put a another wheel we'll put another wheel so we could kind of see what we're talking about there uh, you look at that diameter of that and now you can see where you actually have the clearance to put a socket in there oh yeah this one has but it's better clearance not as much but ideally you don't want to use the, the stock lug nut either so that you don't have to worry about that clearance do you guys sell lug nuts too we do sell a lug nut you want to use either a three-quarter hex or a spline drive lug nut because the spline drive is actually only a 17 millimeter head instead of a three-quarter head. So that's actually a better fit for it. Hold on, whoa, 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 hold on. Three-quarter, three-quarter, seven. Is that, are you talking standard right now? Yes, sorry. This is for Nick, I have to go back because the three-quarter, for those who know a little bit about math, <laughs> kind of equal to the 19 millimeter. Uh, got it. Equal to. Okay. Because it's still a equal Honda. Equal to. Still a Honda. So. Still import. But the most common you'll find on anybody's impact gun is going to be a three quarter, not a 19 millimeter. Hmm. But you go to smaller stud, 
or the smaller lug nut, excuse me, on the 17 millimeter spline, you will use that 17 millimeter lug nut. I mean socket, excuse me, <sighs> socket. Well, I think I need a this boy's go by a new me. toolkit. Yep. You definitely need some new tools. All right, so there's quite a few things that I actually picked up. If you have any questions, you can always give them a call or you can just rewind the video and rewatch it, share it with your friends, take notes, do a little video report and I won't grade you, but I mean, you'll learn something. But learn about offsets, learn what fits and may not fit so well on the Talon, the Thousand X specifically. The Thousand R is, is a little bit wider, so you have some more you have a little there, more right? clearance there, but you also have to make sure that you're keeping the right offset as well. Because as you've seen, what we put on here for this car, that 15 by 7 with a 4 inch back spacing was aggressive for this car 2 inches. Now you go to the R, which is wider than this car, now you put that same wheel on it and it makes it even more extreme. So that's one thing you always want to watch depending on what model you have. Obviously we got a cool model we're working with here. These three wheels fit. The last one's a little bit more aggressive than I would prefer to have on it. But again, hopefully you soaked up some of that information. I know it's a lot to throw at you. Um, rewind, like Nick said, give us a call. We get you some more info, a little more details on it, or see a good professional shop, UTV Power Sports location, that knows what they're doing and can actually explain that to you and why because there is a difference. This isn't the typical road race application, drag race application, VIP, hella flush, no. It, you kind of have to, even though it's a crossover and there's some you know, basic principle yep. to it, it's, it's still very different. Just like the extended studs, I, I, that even crossed my mind about once you start getting out of the mud and you know, some rough terrain, the threads could actually mess up if it's not protected right. So we'll learn the different offsets, learn the backspacing, Learn the lug pattern, learn the pros and cons to everything. Obviously the tires will make a difference as well. And if you learn about no scrubs, uh, scrub, <laughs> scrubs is bad. Uh, well, kind of reiterating on that, hmm. the geometry, geometry, stock geometry is what we started out <laughs> using somebody else's technical word, which is in the fabrication industry called a scrub radius. If we get beyond where we should be, it creates a problem. So, again, the correct offset, the correct suspension, the correct person to tell you and teach you what you're buying and what you need, that helps quite a bit. So, See, and that's why I'm really glad you that's guys... That's why I'm here to help you. <laughs> yeah, because I definitely need it. This, this crossover, I thought it was going to be just a breeze and just hop on in and just start driving, making some power, and nope. Nope. It's... I got to get a different tool set. Can you believe that? I mean, even though this talent still uses a lot of the metric stuff, just saying. All right, guys, so this pretty much just wraps it up. And as Jaime mentioned in the beginning of the video, there is a reason why we did this to test all the different offsets, specifically for the Honda Talon, the Thousand X that we we're partnered on together. So be sure to subscribe because they have something coming out that's going to be really exciting. Stay tuned, guys. I'm excited. Very cool. Thank I can't you. wait. Hopefully I get the first set. If you think I should get the first set, go ahead and comment below. How many likes do I need to get on this video to get the first set of the whatever it is you guys are working on? Let's shoot low and give you at least a couple thousand. A couple? Are you <laughs> All right. A couple thousand. You know, somebody back here said 10,000. Well, deal. If I can get 10,000 likes on this video. See, I was going easy. 10,000 likes is all he needs for That's him it. to get a free set of wheels. Guys, I have more than 10,000 subscribers, so. It's a little bit of work. I know I haven't made a lot of content with the import drag racing stuff, but I could really use your help because this off-road scene is a little more expensive. But thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I'm Nick, also known as Also Sick. We're here at Vision Wheel. Be sure to follow them on all social media. And remember, life's so, so sick, live it.